Hey everybody, and um, today I wanted to show you these 1980s um, television and movie action figures. And these were literally all the action figures a 10 year old kid would want in the 80s. Um, you have the A-Team, you have Commando, and you have Rambo. And I'm going to show you all of these figures and how cool they were for that 1980s kid that I was. So, I guess I'll start with Commando. Um, this is the John Matrix action figure that came out the same year as the Rambo action figure here. Um, it looks a good deal like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is very, very tan. And he has his battle paint on, on his face and arms. And if you take off his vest, it's on his chest too. He's wearing his uh, fatigue pants. And underneath this, he has the, the black Speedo that you see him in the movie wearing when he is um, rowing the, the boat to, um, what was the name of the island, Costa Verde or whatever. Um... And he has a, an Uzi that he can't hold very well in e either one of his hands. He has a knife. He has uh, this uh, semi-automatic pistol in a, uh, in a leg holster that constantly slips down. Um, but this is still a really cool action figure. And it came with this comic, which I actually read before... I watched the movie. Um, it was put out by Diamond Comics, and it says somewhere, somehow, someone's going to pay. And this is the official, uh, the action-packed story of Colonel John Matrix, the official comic tie-in uh, that was packaged with the action figure in 1986. And because I'm not afraid of a copyright flag for this one, because I don't think this was ever copyrighted, I'm going to read the comic. And we'll talk about it, along with the movie Commando. <laughs> Highly skilled in martial arts and hand-to-hand -hand combat, a weapons expert, and a specialist in covert operations, he was head of the government's most secret operative commando unit, then forced into early retirement when his face and reputation became too well-known in international terrorist circles. He was given a new identity, that of Colonel John Matrix, retired. And he's with his daughter, who was played by... Um, uh, Alyssa Milano. Uh, ha. I know she's like, look, Daddy, he's developing an appetite like yours. Ha. Huh, I doubt it, but watching him eat has made me hungry. Let's you and me have some breakfast. Keeping a low profile and living in his rural splendor with his 11 year old daughter, Matrix has laid down the weapons of war and settled into a life of peace. Thucka, thucka, thucka. Until now. An army helicopter. Oh no, I thought you were through with all, all that army stuff. It's General Kirby, the man who trained me as a commando. Good to see you, John. Good to see you in one piece, that is. What, what do you mean, sir? One by one, the members of your old commando unit have been killed, murdered. We don't know who is responsible, but if the pattern continues, it's a good bet they may strike here next. These guards will stay with you until we have this thing under control. How about breakfast, Jenny? And then they go away. And then boom, 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 pow. Suddenly, we're under attack. Oh, Jenny, go to your room. He picks up an M16 and starts fighting. Have to get to Jenny's room before blam, blam, blam. We have your daughter, Matrix. Uh-oh. You will be reasonable and do as we say, right? Wrong. Crunch. He punches him in the face and you see his nose get flat. Ginny, I think in the movie it was a little more violent. Stop squirming, you little brat. Your father will have an old score to settle. Vroom. He's chasing. This guy's crazy. Crunch. This tranquilizer will keep him quiet. They shoot him with a tranquilizer and he's like, oh, soon. Bennett. Yes, Matrix, it's me. At last, I will have my revenge on you for kicking me out of the commando unit. Several years ago, you engineered a coup that deposed General Arius and Valverde. 
If you value your daughter's life, you will kill the democratically elected president that you yourself helped place in power. So that General Ares can once again become dictator, you traitorous mercenary. Just you try and stop us. Sully, see that Matrix catches his flight to Central America. Right. Henry, you will go with Matrix and report when you land in Valverde. Soon. How long till we reach Valverde? Eleven hours, sir. Thank you, miss. Ooh, he punches him out. Sleep tight, Enrique. Enrique. Well, here goes nothing, and he jumps out of the plane. Made it. I have 11 hours until the plane lands, only 11 hours in which to rescue Jenny, and he sets his watch. The plane took off. Matrix is on his way, Bennett. And that's Sully. In the parking lot. Hiya, babe. Sully's the name. Party's the game. How about a drink? Forget it, mister. Sleazoid creep, she thinks. Blankety blank, flaky, flaky stewardess. What? What are you doing in my... Shh. There's no time to explain. That man you were talking to, following car. It's a matter of life and death. That low life is part of a gang that kidnapped my daughter. Uh, my name's Cindy. What are you doing? What are you going to crash? Now, silly. They have taken Jenny. Okay, okay. Oh no, my car. I'll talk. She's on General Ares' secret military base. It's off. It's on an island off the coast of Santa Barbara. The latitude and longitude coordinates are... Sorry about the paint job. What did you do with Sully? I let him go. Matrix and Cindy commandeer an old seaplane and thanks to Cindy's aeronautical skills are soon winging their way to the secret island base. We must fly low to avoid radar detection, Cindy. I hope I can manage it. This crate is older than I am. Take care, John. I'll take care all right of, the, all of, all right of them. And he's uh, rowing, but he's wearing a red shirt, not the Speedo we saw in the movie. He puts on his equipment, like the action figure. Matrix dons his battle vest. In one hour, the plane that I was supposed to be on will land. One hour to take care of General Ares' private army of terrorists and save Ginny. Having set their precise timing mechanisms, Matrix plants the Claymore mines. The high-tech explosive devices simultaneously self-detonate. Perfect timing. Have a nice day, guys. Meanwhile, General Arius Matrix is here. Bennett, after the girl, kill her. Come back here, you little Ginny. And then Bennett's got Ginny. Let her go, Bennett. It's me you want. Let's now. Let's party. Eat fist, fathead. And then, no, you eat it. And he punches him out and he knocks his head into a big steam thing go ahead bennett let off some steam that's so non-violent compared to the actual movie oh daddy you saved me soon on the beach didn't you leave anything for us john nope come on Ginny. there's someone i want you to meet wow it looks like an earthquake a tornado and a typhoon all hit the island at once yes soldier an earthquake tornado and typhoon all rolled up into one man colonel john matrix commando the end so that comic sums up the movie, and um, this was the exciting action figure you got, and you got everything you see here, the vest, the Uzi, and the, um, the knife, and the pistol, so, and the pants, which also are removable, so you can see his uh, cool Speedo under this, which I'm really, I don't really want to take it off, um, I mean... Like, when we were kids, we'd like, take his vest off so you can see his muscles. It's, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, but nah, I'm going to leave it on because, um, also, this is, like, a 40-year-old action figure, so I don't really want to, like, destroy it. But let's go over the articulation. He has swivel head, swivel shoulders, uh, swivel hips, and uh, he has swivel hips. And that's about it. He can't move his knees. It's basically the basic... One, two, three, four, five, six. Basic six articulation. Kind of like uh, a Power of the Force Star Wars action figure. So this um, this was one of the Rambo guns. This Falau looking thing. And um, I can't remember which character had this. But it doesn't go with any of the ones I'm showing, but I just kind of like it. So I keep it with the other 
uh, 80s action figures here. So it's kind of a cool little sniper rifle with this detachable bayonet that snaps on, um, but doesn't stay on very well. So, but that's another little piece of 80s uh, awesomeness here. Now let's look at some other movie action figures. Well, these are technically, uh, for the cartoon show, Rambo uh, Forces of Freedom, but there's no mistaking that this figure is like the movie. He has the green Buddha that he was uh, given in the movie, his red bandana, and he has the scars on his chest that uh, only came from one awful thing which was not really appropriate to a cartoon show so i really feel like this was a movie action figure but you could say when they did start making the forces of freedom figures um they uh put him in a t-shirt to sort of cover up the scars and um because i think some people thought it was including sylvester stallone thought it was in bad taste so um, this is the much more articulated John Rambo action figure. And if you watched First Blood or the other movies, you'll know that John Rambo doesn't go anywhere without his trusty combat knife. And incidentally, um, survival knives became very popular because of this movie. Um, they, This movie is really what made survival knives chic or whatever because um and it's hard to get this thing back in here there we go yeah and it comes with his scabbard he also has these two like belt buckle knives see that come out but they to keep them in the belt you have to kind of keep them in together. So um, they tried to give him a lot of accessories. So he has a bandolier strap with little tiny bullets on it. And he has his trusty M60 machine gun. And he has his trusty Russian made uh, rocket launcher. Um, and the way this works is you can pull the string back and <laughs> it actually uh, it's supposed to, this is old, but it's supposed to pop out if you do it right. The little red rocket will pop out and the string keeps it all together. So this is the complete Rambo action figure ensemble with his, um, his he also came with this card. It says Rambo, John J, codename Lone Wolf. Distinguishing physical characteristics. Born Bowie, Arizona. I think that was uh, confirmed in the movies. Um, Indian, Italian, German descent. 6'1", 195 pounds. I don't think Stallone's that tall. Brown eyes, 2010 vision. Scars on upper arms, face, chest, and back. Military record. Honorable Discharge, U.S. Army, Special Forces, Rank Master Sergeant. In the movies, they retcon that into making him into an officer. But if you watch the last Rambo movie, his uniform looks kind of like a hybrid between an Army and an Air Force uniform. Um, let's see. It's Congressional Medal of Honor, two Silver Stars, four Bronze Stars, Distinguished Service Cross, and four Purple Hearts. Military Qualified, Paratrooper, Air Assault, Ranger, Special Forces, Scuba... Pathfinder, Jungle Expert, Arctic Warfare, Helicopter Pilot. Generally, you're not a helicopter pilot unless you're at least a warrant officer. Expert in Ninjutsu, Karate, Bandu, Black Belts, Demolitions, Mines, Plastic, Dynamite, Booby Traps, Languages, Southern Asian, European, Slavic, Field Medicine. And on the back, it says his weapons that are included with this figure. Ex, um, expert in the use of most weapon and foreign conventional and unconventional weapons. This RPG rocket launcher made by the USSR caliber 40 millimeter, effective range 500 meters, penetrates 320 millimeters of armor plate, muzzle velocity 900 meters per second. 
an M16 machine gun, M60 machine gun, USA, caliber 7.62 millimeter. That's not correct. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm thinking about M16s. Um, rate of fire, 550 rounds per minute. Effective range, 1,000 meters. Gas operated, air cooled. The survival knife, USA. 10 inch hand forged stainless steel blade. 15 inches overall length. Compass, saw teeth, special scabbard. And the T knives made in China. Two and a half inch stainless steel blade, protective pocket and belt. Copyright 1985, 1986 by Coleco. So that's your collector card for your Rambo figure. So I'm going to get his RPG uh, back together. I just kind of loop the little um, string around. And uh, now you, he, he's all outfitted for battle. And let's talk about articulation. He has uh, he has a hollow, soft hollow head like the Masters of the Universe figures. Uh, he has uh, swivel shoulders, swivel neck, um, no swivel in the waist. Uh -oh. um, he has a great joint in the legs. He has like a ball joint in the legs, which was pretty cool for back then. And he has. Um, a swivel joint in the knees and that's it so he's still pretty for the 80s this was pretty good this was pretty good articulation now let's set John Rambo aside and let's look at his commander Colonel Troutman and all of his crazy accessories because I think they were afraid the kids wouldn't want to buy Colonel Troutman so they decided to overload him with equipment he is just like crawling with accessories. So it looks a little bit like um, Richard Crenna from um, Rambo. And he also had this likeness in, in the cartoon show. Um, he's wearing a, a 1980s era army uniform, even down to the, the uh, badge there with the US Army name tapes and everything which I like that he has the combat boots just like Rambo and he is just loaded down with stuff so and he's got his green beret on and the hollow head so let's look at all of the weapons that Colonel Trotman has here he has um, a 7.62 FN machine gun from Belgium that's what that big thing is 7.62 millimeter effective range 1200 meters muzzle velocity 840 meters per second rate of fire 600 to 1000 rounds per minute he has an m16 rifle it says 5.56 millimeter i thought it was 223 cap maybe i'm i don't know i thought maybe that's the same thing i was in the air force we only fired it for like one day okay um rate of fire 650 to 850 rounds per minute Effective range 400 meters, muzzle velocity 990 meters per second. He has a Colt 45 pistol, 45 millimeter. Uh, or is that? I thought it was 45 caliber. Or is that the same thing? I don't know. I I think 45 millimeter would be too many millimeters though. Like nine millimeter is okay. Muzzle velocity 250 meters per second, range 50 meters. Stiletto USA. A six inch blade, handle four inches, materials hardened steel blade and wooden handle. And let's read about Colonel Troutman. Troutman Samuel. Distinguishing physical characteristics. Born Santa Fe, New Mexico, six foot, 190 pounds, brown eyes, 20 20 vision. He didn't, Richard Crenna didn't look like a six foot, 190 pound guy. Education, West Point, graduated with honors, military record, U.S. Army, Special Forces, rank colonel, Special Forces commander, member of elite corps of military advisors, war record, three purple hearts, three bronze stars, three crosses of gallantry, two silver stars, and two soldiers' crosses, military qualified, Special Forces, ranger, jungle expert, pathfinder, and airborne, expert in survival techniques, field medicine, and booby traps. So let's look at all of his guns here. So first he has um, this stiletto, which 
Um, I don't remember Chapman carrying one. He comes with a walkie-talkie that clips onto, like, one of the mini belts he has on. He has his M16. Um, he has his, his Belgian machine gun, and it's supposed to, like, the bullets are this thing, and you turn this dial, see, and it will advance the, um, the, if you turn it, it will advance the belt, but it tends to jam a little bit, so I also don't like to mess with it too much, because it's old, and it might, you know, break, and I don't want to do that. He has his, uh, 45 caliber or as they said, a 45 millimeter pistol, um, which fits nicely into his holster here. Um, let's see, he has patches, Ranger and Airborne tabs on his patch there, and he has uh, an Airborne tab here. So he has two Airborne tabs, and he has like, um, I guess it looks like 7th Cavalry, kind of, but it's just, I don't think it is. Just sort of a generic. And his name tapes and his green beret. And um, he has the exact same articulation as Rambo. Just many, many more guns. And like I said, they gave him so much because they wanted kids to buy him. He has many more accessories than the Rambo figure, which is kind of strange because um, you'd think Rambo would have all these guns. I had to get some coffee. Okay, now, we've looked at Rambo and Commando. Um, let's look at the A-Team. Um, these action figures are from the early 80s. And they were from the incredibly popular TV show, The A-Team. And if you were a kid, there was only one figure you wanted, and it was this one right here, B.A. Baracus. This is the one I wanted. Um, this is the one my parents bought for me. I actually have two of these figures. Um, he even has his, t his signature tattoo in his arm that says TCB Mr. T, which stands for Taking Care of Business. He has all of his gold jewelry on. He's wearing the same outfit he wore in the pilot episode, the orange and blue vest. He has a pair of bolt cutters that he can hold and you can also take him out of his hand and you can give him the M16 that he also holds really nicely and he has a tool belt see this that comes off he's wearing sneakers and his socks pulled over his pants like he wore in the show and articulation wise he has a big old hollow uh, head with a um, uh, swivel joint he has swivel shoulders a swivel waist uh, swivel hips and knees so they have pretty good articulation and Mr. T also came with this awesome toolbox that is just jam packed with stuff so you can open it take out the there's a tool tray you can take out and it has all of these tools he has a drill He has um, drill bits. He has a small hammer. He has, of course, his boat cutters. Um, he has a wrench. He has a hacksaw. A screwdriver. And a socket wrench with a set of sockets. And let me tell you, for a kid, this was some crazy cool stuff. To have all of these accessories with one action figure. You just didn't get this much as a kid. Um, so, in the boxes, all of the accessories were like... Um, they were in a little cardboard thing, so you couldn't see what you're getting. So your imagination ran wild when you were in the toy store, just thinking about what am I gonna get if I if my parents buy me BA, like what kind of cool stuff. So you could put it all back together. This toolbox to me was one of the greatest accessories in any action figure ever. 
and it closes and he can put it over his shoulder and he's ready to he's ready to fix the you know, the, he's ready to turn a school bus into a tank or whatever. You know, in every episode of the A-Team, they would do some kind of crazy, like, mechanical work and and make something. So let's put B.A. back here. Um, the second most popular figure that was targeted to the kids was Murdoch because he was the second kid favorite character on the A-Team. And he also had the second most amount of accessories. So, um... And that, you know, he was he was the fun, funny character. He was my second favorite character on the show because he was always making me laugh. He was played by Dwight Schultz. And he was supposed to be an army pilot who had lost his mind. And he was funny and, and always doing funny stuff. So that was the big gag of the show. But he also was this crack pilot and everything. So the action figure looks you know pretty good for then it was it's chunky all of these 18 figures are chunky but he came with all kinds of accessories too he came with a pair of binoculars he came with this backpack that had all of this climbing equipment on it which is interesting and a grapple hook um so it's like so murdoch is ready to climb a mountain or something he has the m16 and um he can hold it with his little tiny they had a little tiny hole in their hand, which made it hard for them to hold anything. So you had to really kind of squeeze that gun in there. And you see, you can hold it about that much. So it looks kind of stupid. And that was one problem I had with a lot of these A-Team figures is um, they, they couldn't really hold all their stuff, except BA. All the other characters couldn't really hold anything, as you'll see. Um, like, you could run the... the the string of the grapple hook through that and you could like could take the grapple hook out of this it's on a little hook here and uh like you could run that through his hand just barely and even that doesn't really hardly fit anymore. So. I mean, it, honestly, that hole is almost too tiny even for that. So he has the grapple hook. But, uh. The, these action figures were made to look great in the package. But when kids took them out of the package, they found out all they could really do is kind of like stand with their knee up and barely hold something. <laughs> like you could, you could put the binoculars here, but you can't really like, you can't really hold them. So like you could do that maybe. <laughs> so, but play wise, the commercials made it look all exciting. Like they would put their figures down and there would be battle music and everything. But, um, they really... They honestly look much better just keeping them in the package. So this was... Um... Now, they did make another set. They made uh, three and three-quarter scale A-team action figures and bad guys. And they also made bad guys in the scale, too. But the three and three-quarter one scales could hold all their stuff, and they were more fun. The only problem was they were wearing stupid outfits. At least these outfits look like the show. So let's um, put Murdoch back here. Here's Face Man, Templeton Peck, played by um, Dirk Benedict. And he was like, oh, if, if you look, Friday is uh, joining the video scratching on his scratching post. He was um, the uh, lieutenant, and he was like the, 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 the romantic, heartthrobby kind of guy in the show. He comes with a little tiny Uzi, and just kind of compare that to um, John Matrix. John Matrix's Uzi. <laughs> so uh, obviously, um, one's a little bit more in scale than the other. Yeah, uh, his Uzi must be like a BB gun or something. And he also can really hold it. He can only hold it as far as the um, little magazine there. 
He has a backpack that has all kinds of, um, uh, has like field communications equipment. And I guess that makes sense because he's like the, the communicator guy. So he, as you can see, there's still like loose plastic on this because it, he hasn't moved it around a lot. And, um, that he has, uh, the same articulation, swivel head, swivel shoulders, swivel waist, uh, swivel hips, but they're very tight and swivel knees. And he's wearing like dark blue jeans. He has a, a belt on and Murdoch had a belt on too, but this, the belts are different on the figures too. Like face has a, uh, like a pistol here and a canteen. And, um, he also has his M16 that he can sort of hold better than he can hold. But actually the best way to do this is to just put it on his shoulder and that little strap will come off really easily. So put the, put this on his shoulder. These you quickly learned as a kid, these were better just to display. So, because they would just kind of come apart and they couldn't do much. Like, he could hold the Uzi like this, but it would come right out of his hand. So, that's the face man. Yeah. As you can see, 80s action figures had some limitations. Coffee. Okay. Here's Hannibal. Um, John Hannibal Smith. And that's a pretty good likeness to George Papard. Um, they all have this like goofy smile on their face except Mr. T, but, uh, Hannibal was like the master of disguise and he, this is essentially how he dressed in the show with like a, a tan kind of Ike jacket and blue, some light colored blue jeans. He comes with, um, kind of an M60 looking thing with, um, a little tiny, a little tiny ammunition feed going through it, and unfortunately, the handle's too big to fit in his little, his little tiny hand. So you can only put this part of the M60 here. So like he's just like carrying it. Um. So he can't really hold it, but he does have an M16 that he can hold about as well as the other guys. Like that, but uh, like I said, these are forty year. Well, yeah, nineteen eighty two. These are forty year old action figures, so I don't really want to push them, and end up like, you know, damaging them because I think these are worth a little bit at this point, and these are all in good shape. Um, he has like, looks like archery stuff, like with bombs on the end, like little darts or something that you would shoot with a bow, and then this looks like ammunition. In his pack and it looks like there would have should have been a lid that went with this and I may have lost it but I th just I don't remember it looks like there should be a lid but I don't see it and uh, he has his two guns and he came with like the least amount of stuff so they were like I don't think kids are gonna want to buy him anyway unless they were just completionists so we're only gonna give him like a belt a backpack and two guns so and finally uh -oh, um i'm knocking them all down finally uh triple a amy uh this was the rarer the rarest of the good guys figures and i think all the bad guys were kind of rare too get some coffee so she comes with and even though she's supposed to be a newspaper reporter they decided to give her uh av equipment um, so she also has like a belt, she has Murdoch's belt, so you could put a grapple hook with her too if you wanted to. Um, she has a big tape recorder, and you can see a tape in there, and she has a movie camera that also has like a little microphone that barely fits in her little paw, just barely, and it's got like a little hole in the end, like a lens, so, which is cool. She has the strangest shaped head. Like her neck just goes way back. And it doesn't look anything like the very pretty actress who played her. Um, she has a very weird looking, like like she's ready to give you a hug hand here. And she's wearing some P 
pink pants and sneakers and um, like this jacket. So she, even though she was a newspaper reporter, Triple A here is a camera operator. Um, and probably of all of, if, I mean, you wanted to put together the whole set. She's probably the goofiest of all of the figures because she doesn't even do what she does in the show. But I'm glad they did give her a figure anyway. Although Triple A didn't make it through the whole series. I heard there was like tension between her and George Papard. So, so this is the A-Team set. And, uh, and we can try to put it all back together here. There's Hannibal with the gun that he can't hold. And, um, here's Murdoch. And his grapple hook. So... Yep, his belt came undone. Oh, yeah, it's old. You don't want to, like, you know, manipulate these figures too much because they are, this is old stuff. So, actually, it's probably better to loop this up. And then just go ahead and clip it to his belt thing. There we go. That looks good. And then you can give him his M16. And now Murdoch is... Just, they can't hold anything. <laughs> Who am I kidding? These figures were for display. These figures were made to, sew, uh, to, to get kids excited. To... Um, because they looked great in the box. But as you can see, they really didn't do a whole lot. And they didn't have a lot of good play value. BA was the only one that really could, like, kind of hold everything and do stuff. And Face Man. And his M16 that comes apart here okay okay so there is the a team you can enjoy looking at this uh really cool 1983 action figures now we can put in slightly almost the same scale Colonel Chapman right here and we can put John Rambo right here okay and then the hardest one to stand is Colonel Matrix he is Give him back his Uzi that he can barely hold and put him right here. And there you have a nice, awesome collection of 1980s movie and television figures. So, and, and play wise, you know, I will say this when I was 9, 10, 11, um, you know, these were. You, you weren't very discriminating as a kid. You know, you could play with these and you could have fun with them. Um, and, and you know, the little things like his vest with all the little things coming off of it. Little, well, the one thing coming off of it, the knife. And his, this was a really, this was a cool figure. I mean, if you think about it, he had cloth goods. Uh, he had... Like this very, very cool 
holster for his his pistol here that clipped closed i mean these were really great features and he came with this great comic book so um actually as a kid this was i was so excited to get this guy i mean i just and i watched the movie after i got the figure and um i was like "Ooh, this is pretty violent the comic was so like harmless And, you know, it's funny, when we were in the store, I was with my grandparents, actually, when they bought me the Commando figure, and there was also this one, and they, my grandpa said, you can pick, you can either have Rambo or you can have Commando, and I picked uh, Commando, because at the time, I was like, oh, I'll probably get Rambo later, but uh, I, I waited a long time before I ended up getting Rambo, but, um, and I ended up kind of wishing I had gotten the Rambo instead, because first of all, I saw the movie first. And he just had more stuff, like, and he had his knife and everything, like, th like first blood. I really liked that, so. Kind of wish I had gotten him first, and I like the. Oh, uh, uh, he just had more, like this. Um. Whoa, dominoes. This is really a cool um, accessory, actually. For nineteen eighty five, this was actually really cool. Let me set these guys up again. These, the 80s should stand. Mr. T is not falling down. Not on my watch. Maybe I could do, yeah, that's better. That's how it should be. Hannibal. Hannibal's very, very light colored blue jeans. Murdoch. And man, I, I, I was like, Carl Chauvin has so much stuff. Like, he was just had an amazing amount of accessories. Putting them back together it just takes forever. And some of them are just kind of dumb, like the stiletto. It's like, why does he have a stiletto? Um, I actually liked First Blood was my favorite um, Rambo movie. And... So when I got this figure as a kid, I tried to like reenact, you know, scenes of First Blood, and I could use Hannibal as to play Sheriff Teasel. So they actually that actually kind of worked because I could have, um, could, because you know there's a little bit of a resemblance between Brian Dennehy and this Hannibal action figure, and you could take everything off him and just have him with his knife. You could take the. Uh, this little strap comes off, just snaps off. Although I, I want to be really careful because the last thing I want to do is tear this plastic that's been intact for like 40 years. So I think I'm just going to leave it on well, before I end up tearing something on camera and feeling really stupid. But he holds his knife pretty well, and you could be like, like, oh. you could be like, you drew first blood, not me, you drew first blood. And then you could have Chapman like, God didn't make Rambo, I made Rambo. See, this is the kind of stuff you could do as a kid with these figures. You could have these kind of adventures. And they, you know, for, I, I've seen they made new Rambo action figures and they're much more realistic, but they're just not as fun as these. There we go.
kind of got to kind of balance him a little bit here. Oh, there goes Trip away. Let's put um, Chapman there. Put Trip away here. Yeah, he he was he was Sheriff Teasel more than he was Hannibal. Because once I figured out these A team guys couldn't do much of anything except stand there and smile, uh, they started taking on different parts in my in my boyhood imagination. But Matrix was always Matrix. I just always wished that he could hold his Uzi better because he really can't. And it's like he holds it like he doesn't know what to do with it. So it's like that. <laughs> that when you're a kid that just drives you crazy because you want him to hold the gun straight. He can't hold any of his stuff really except maybe the knife. Like not even that. Falls right off his hand. It just really kinda looks good in the vest. That's really so you could reenact that scene when he's putting everything on. He's like he's putting Everything in his little holsters and scabbards and everything. The coolest thing about Matrix, though, was definitely the pants. Because you didn't get a lot of soft goods uh, in, in the 80s. You just didn't. Now, this was, of all of these figures, this was the first one I ever had. It was BA. Um, this is the one. Uh, we went to Post Oak. No, 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 no. Golden Triangle Mall in Denton, Texas. 1982 or 83 and I got a VA action figure and um, I think it was and uh, I got eventually got another one because I had lost one and then I ended up uh, with two VA action figures so I mean, he was, I was obsessed with the A-Team as a kid. And the only one I wanted at first was B.A., but then I got all completionist. And then suddenly I needed to have all of them. Because you have to have the whole team, you know. Even this one, which is just so goofy. And her goofy, weird-shaped head. I mean, that neck is so strange. If you're wondering about the actress she ended up in Star Trek the Next Generation playing the um, the genderless race that Riker falls in love with she played that girl and that was actually a really good part but I always thought that uh, Amy was you know really cool in the A-team and the, the likenesses are pretty good if you were a kid and say you got this one at first, this was the only one, you, you will have been so disappointed. Because you can't even hold anything. And the Uzi's so pathetically small. And I don't know, I don't think Face was any kid's favorite character. That was like your mom's favorite character. She was like, oh, I like Dirk Benedict. He was in Bowser Galactica. Yeah, it was just Murdoch and B.A. were your favorite characters. And then maybe Hannibal, because he would do, like, the funny disguises and stuff. Uh, okay, I'll take off the vest so you can see. This is, you know, when you're a 12-year-old, you're like, let's see his muscles. So, the vest comes off like this. And... And there you have Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 80s with his battle paint on and all of his muscles. And he's all like, boom. That was, uh, and then it was like, a, you know, wrestling figures before you had wrestling figures. And then you could, he could go head to head with Rambo and be like, I'm more built than you, Stallone. And I'm more tan. that I'm putting the vest back on.
these figures were the best. The only other action figures you had in the 80s were Star Wars, um, Transformers, He-Mans. Um, then they, they got some other, like, like they had Chris Stars. They had a few other things that weren't that popular that kind of were flash in the pans. And they had Mask, which was these, they were like small action figures. There we go. Get the battle vests back going on here. I just like to uh, like look at them all because it just brings back memories to me. That's just like happy childhood memories. My these were like favorite movies and favorite shows, and I could reenact like parts from them and everything. And I, oddly enough, like the fact that he has scars all over his chest is so strange because I don't know if kids understood exactly. Well, I did, but I don't know if kids would understand the significance of that. And uh, they, if you ever watched the Rambo Forces of Freedom cartoon, it was so goofy. Like, it would start out like some guys would rob a bank or something, and then Colonel Chopman, it would cut to him. He'd be like, get me Rambo. And then they cut away, and then you see Rambo, and he's, like, climbing a tree to save the cats or something. <laughs> and... Um, and I'm like, this is nothing like the PTSD disturbed veteran that Rambo was supposed to be about. It wasn't at all. It was just so funny and so 80s. That's what the 80s was about. We, we just didn't care about all that stuff. If it was awesome, it was awesome. So. Uh, and you know, the funny thing is, all of these characters here with the exception of Amy Ross was to be like veterans who had, you know, gone through terrible things. That was like the 80s archetype. All of these characters were like B.A. was a sergeant and Hannibal was a colonel. Face was a lieutenant. Murdoch was a captain. You know, they were all like supposed to be battle touched and forgotten and, you know, mistreated veterans. Uh oh. Murdoch knocked over Troutman, who then not faces M16. Oh, this is a really cool set. I have to admit, I really like it. It just brings back memories. It's not the... They're not the best action figures in the world by any means. They're not very posable. They don't do a lot. They can't hold their weapons. The paint is terrible, <laughs> but they're still um, happy memories. Because as a kid, getting some Galoob A-Team action figures, that was a big deal. And this was Kali... Wait, wait, who, who made Commando? This was... Diamond Toys and Diamond Comics. And who can forget this G-rated take on Commando with absolutely no killing, just um, guys getting knocked out and stuff. But that, you know, like Masters of the Universe action figures also came with a comic like this. So, um... I think they were, and this kind of reminds me a little bit, in a way, it's sort of made it the same way as a Masters of the Universe action figure. Kind of, um, the same sort of, like, hunched over stance, muscle bound looking. Oh, my, my cat's starting to caterwaul, he wants me to wrap this video up. He starts to get bored. You can hear him. He gets on the stairs and he caterwauls, that's like his thing. Oh, then he starts running. We call it the zoomies, but another thing... Oh, dominoes. Another thing he does is he'll run, get on the couch, and then he'll lick himself. And we call that the groomies. We don't know why. He'll like run real fast, climb the couch up, and then he'll start groom himself. It's really weird. So... 
this is a little weenie. It's funny how the M16 is like bigger than what I think is supposed to be an M60. Actually, it'd be better if you could carry it like this. But you can't, because these guys can't carry anything. I mean, <laughs> like I said, these were these figures were really just for display in the box. If you took it, if you're dumb enough to take it out of the package, you found yourself with practically pointless action figures. Or they weren't the most well made. Although, I think the, the Rambo still holds up pretty well. There's my cat running up and down the stairs, having a fit, because that's what he does. <laughs> they can't own anything. Nope. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like my channel, please um, 
comment, uh, rate, subscribe, give me a like, and um, click the bell icon. And until next time, bye.